Welcome back to section 3, Environment and Movement. Within this section, we'll learn how to create the environment using background elements, how to add player movement with both horizontal and vertical limits, and then lastly how to add random spawning and movement of the asteroids in our game. In this video, we are going to go over creating an environment for our game within Blender. During this video, we'll learn how to configure the render settings of our game, how to add a background and stars, and then lastly how to add lighting to our scene. To begin this section, we are first going to open up a default scene within Blender. After this, we are going to go up the top here and change the engine to Blender Game. We'll then go under Shading and again select GLSL. The first thing we are going to do is configure the render settings for our game. To do this, we are going to go over into the render panel here and determine the resolution which we want our game to be run at. In this case, we'll be referring to the standalone player, as this is how the game will be played when we finally export it. To begin the game, I'm going to click Start. This will begin the game engine and open up a new window. If you do not want this to run, you can simply close it. This is a preview of what the game will look like when we run it. In this case, I want to change the resolution to be 480 on the X axis and 760 on the Y axis. After this, I'm going to click Start again. At the moment, the standalone player does not look very good, as there is a lot of black space. To get rid of this, we need to change the resolution of the camera. Here, I'm going to click the cross to close the standalone player. The next thing we'll do is go over into the embedded player section and copy across the same resolution. In this case, we are going to change it to 480 and 760. By doing this, notice how in the 3D viewport, the shape of the camera has changed. This means that if we now start the standalone player, the representation will be in the same aspect ratio and this means we won't be seeing any black bars. Now that we have set up the resolution, the next thing I'm going to do is set up the camera. Here I'm going to select the default cube and then press X and delete. We'll then select the main camera and then press numpad 7 on the keyboard. We are also going to press numpad 5 to go into orthographic view. From here I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt and numpad 0. This will change the camera's view to the current view from the top. After this, I'm going to press Shift A and add in a plane. This will be the background of our scene. To reflect this, I'm going to go over to the object panel and here I'm going to call this background. After this, we'll press S and Y to scale on the Y axis and S and X. In this case we want to ensure that the plane scales outside of the camera's view, just in case there is any movement or any issues with the placement of the camera. Once we have added the new plane, we are then going to go over to the material settings and give it a new material. Here we are going to turn it to shadeless and then we are going to give it a new texture. After this I'm going to click new, select image or movie and then click open. Here I have created a gradient for the background of our game. If you wish to also use this gradient, it will be available for download below the video. After this, I'm going to go over to Open Image and open this up. The next thing I'm going to do is press Tab and go over into Edit Mode. We are then going to press U and select Reset. After this, we'll press Tab and go back to Object Mode. If we now press Z and go into Texture View, we should now be able to see our gradient. To test this out on the standalone player, I'm going to go over to the Render panel and select the standalone player as Start. Once we have done this, we can now verify to make sure there are no missing edges on our screen. The next thing we need to do is add stars to the background of our scene. To do this, we are first going to save this blend file. Here, I'm going to press Ctrl S. I'm going to select an appropriate location, and this time I'm going to call it Game. 
After this, we are going to compress it again, and then click Save Blender File. The next thing we are going to do is go to File, and then click New. After this, we will reload a new startup file. Here what I'm going to do is press X and delete the default cube. We'll then press Shift A and add in a UV sphere. Here I'm going to select Smooth and then press S to scale. We are then going to go over to the render dimensions and again for X we are going to select 480 and for Y we are going to select 760. We will then also increase the scale. Here I'm going to press numpad 7, numpad 5, and Control alt and numpad 0. Once we have done this, I'm then going to go over to the Materials tab with the sphere selected, and then click New. We'll add an emission of 2. After this, I'm going to press S to scale, and move it in this location here, using G. We are then going to press Shift D to duplicate, and do this multiple times across the scene. These will act as our different stars. The next thing I'm going to do is press B to box select, select all of these, and press Shift D again, to further duplicate them. Once we have enough stars, we can then begin spreading them out, for the ones that are too close. From here I'm going to press A to deselect, B to box select, and duplicate this portion here. Once we are happy with the layout, we are then going to select one sphere. After this, I'm going to press O to enable proportional editing, and from here, we are going to select random. We are now going to press S to scale. I'm also going to scroll down to increase the influence. This will change how all of the surrounding stars scale as well. In this case, I'm going to scale down, select another sphere, scale up, and do the same across all of the different stars. This will give a different variation of scaling to each of the different stars in the scene. In this case, we can also move them to apply random movement across our scene. Once we are happy with the size and placement of all of these stars, we can then go ahead and turn off proportional editing. After this, we are then going to go over to the render settings and adjust the size here. Notice that we aren't using any of the space here. To fix this, I am simply going to halve the Y resolution. By doing this, we can change this to 380. We can now select our camera, and then press G and Y. After this, we are going to press G and Z to move it down. We are then going to further adjust until we have all the stars in the view. In this case, I am going to select the stars and move them towards the edge of the view. Again, we are going to turn on proportional editing, and then begin moving them towards the edges. Once we are happy with the layout, we can then go over to the render panel, and press render. This will be the star background for our scene. From here we are going to go over to shading, and then select transparent. We are then going to click render again. Notice that now we have a transparent background. Now that we have rendered out the background, we are going to go down the bottom here, select Image, and Save as Image. Again, we are going to select an appropriate location, and this time we are going to call it Stars. We are going to increase compression, and ensure that RGBA is selected. After this, we will click Save as Image. Now that we have finished creating the texture, you can save the blend file if you want. Instead of saving, I'm simply going to return to the current game. From here, I'm going to press Shift A, and add in another plane. After this, we are going to press S to scale, and G to move. In this case, we are also going to move around our scene, and move it up above the other plane. Here, I'm going to press numpad 0. The next thing we need to do is press S and X to scale it on the X axes, and then S and Y. Here I'm going to move it down. We are then going to apply our star texture. To do this, I'm first going to go to the object properties and call this stars. 
We'll then go over to the Materials tab and add a new material. We'll turn off Specular and select Shadeless. Here I'm going to select Diffuse and set this to Full. We are then going to further scroll down. Under Transparency, we are going to enable it and then set Alpha and Specular to zero. After this, we'll add a new texture as image or movie. In this case, we are going to open up our star texture. Here, I'm going to click Open. We are going to select our star's texture here, and then click Open Image. The next thing we need to do is unwrap this plane. Again, to do this, I'm going to press Tab, go into Edit Mode, U, and select Reset. Now if we go back into object mode, you can see that still nothing has happened. This is because in the material settings, we have set transparency to be zero. In this case, we need our new texture to override the alpha channel. To do this, we need to scroll all the way down to the bottom and select alpha. Once we've done this, you can now see that our texture appears. The very last thing we need to do is add lighting to our scene. To do this, we are going to select the lamp and then go over to the lamp settings. From here, we are going to select a hemi lamp. After this, we are going to turn down the energy. Notice how here nothing is changing, and that is because we have shadeless for both the background and the stars. To see the effects of lighting, we need to add a new shape that is not shadeless. To do this, I'm going to press Shift A and add in an icosphere. We are going to move this into the center. Now we can see what the lighting will look like on our scene. I'm then going to press R to rotate and rotate the hemi lamp around until it's coming from the bottom left hand corner. After this, we are going to give it a slightly purple color, the same as the background here. In this case, this is still a bit too bright. We are going to move it out until it's less saturated. The next thing we are going to do is press Shift D to duplicate and then R to rotate. Once we have done this, we now have two different hemi lamps. The next thing I'm going to do is change this to a sun. This will add harsher shadows to our scene. In this case, however, we don't really need shadows and rather just need the light from the sun. To save performance, I'm going to go to the Shadows tab and turn off Shadows. The next thing we'll do is go over into the Color tab and change this to be a blue color. Again, we are going to increase the energy to roughly 1.9. After this, we are going to ensure that our scene looks okay. Here, I'm also going to select the icosphere and select Shading as Smooth. This will give us a preview of what our spaceship and our asteroids will look like. Now that we have added all the settings, I'm also going to go into the object properties and here we are going to call this sun. We are also going to select the hemi and just call it hemi. After this, we are going to press Ctrl S and save. Now that we have finished creating our environment, 